Hello, this is Joanna, coordinator for the Mariposa and Bridging Brothers programs of the Napa County Office of Education. This video will provide you with some basic communication skills in order to be successful in facilitating your groups. We will cover how to be friendly and inviting. We will discuss how to do greetings and brief exchanges, and also how to start a conversation, keep a conversation going, and how to end a conversation. Social skills are friendly qualities or characteristics. Having good social skills is important because unless we decide to move to an isolated island, we will always have to interact with others. They are also necessary in order to have satisfying personal relationships. If you're on the shy side, no worries. Getting comfortable with talking to others and being social takes practice. Take a minute to think about some examples of greetings that you use every day. You may pause the video if you need time to come up with all the different ways that you can say hello to someone else. Examples of greetings include saying hello or hi, asking how you're doing, how's it going. Nonverbal ways of saying hello include smiling, nodding, or waving. When your students first arrive to your groups, you want to make sure to greet them to make them feel welcomed and also so they know that you are happy to see them. Remember that 60 to 90% of communication is nonverbal, so make sure that you pay attention to your body language, look friendly and enthusiastic. Make sure that you communicate on both verbal and nonverbal channels. That means that your body language, such as your facial expressions, match the words that you are saying. Starting a conversation can be difficult for some people. Here are some ways that you can start a conversation. You can start by simply saying hi. If the person is responsive, then you can move on and give a compliment or ask a question. You can compliment something the person is wearing, and then you can ask them where they got it. You can also compliment their ability to do something well. Sharing background information about yourself is also a good way to start a conversation. It will also break the ice with your students, and it could encourage them to share as well. Tell them where you went to school, where you work, the types of activities that you like, the things that you were into when you were their age. Students love hearing stories because it helps them relate to their facilitator. You can keep a conversation going by asking open-ended questions, which we will discuss on the next slide. Something that is very effective for me is getting a person to talk about themselves and storytelling. Make sure to listen actively by saying, yes, I see, that's very interesting, etc. Also make sure to be aware of your body language and use cues to show them that you are interested in what they are saying. Use eye contact, nodding your head, facing them, etc. Open-ended questions are questions that cannot be simply answered with a yes or no response. They require the respondent to provide more information. Take a look at this wheel as it provides words that you can use to ask open-ended questions. You can simply just choose one of the words shown to start your question. Take a look at these prompts as examples on how to ask open-ended questions. So instead of asking, did you have fun this summer? You can ask, tell me more about what you did this summer. Here's a comparison between closed and open-ended questions. So a closed question might sound like, do you think there will be underage drinking at the party? An open-ended question might sound like, what do you see happening if there is alcohol being served? Do you see the difference? The closed question can be answered with simply yes or no, while the open-ended question requires the respondent to provide more information. Next, we will talk about I statements. When you want to express your feelings or concern, you want to make sure to use I statements opposed to you statements. Statements that start with you can sound accusing, while statements that start with I are diplomatic. Although it might take some training of our brain, 
as you statements might be a more automatic reaction, I statements are more effective in communication because they are non-threatening and provide a neutral opinion. On the other hand, you statements can sound threatening and can initiate a defensive response because the person being talked to can feel like they are being attacked. Here is a formula for using I statements. You want to start by telling the person how you feel. For example, I feel concerned. Then you tell them the situation. For example, when you disappear at meals. And you tell them why, because I care about you. And then you offer a suggestion or request to change what you want. So I hope that we can talk about what is going on. Please pause the video now to practice using I statements. Paraphrasing is another good technique to use to ensure that you understand what the person you are listening to is trying to communicate. Paraphrasing is basically just summarizing in your own words what you understood the other person said. However, use with caution and when it feels natural to avoid annoyance. Here's an example of paraphrasing. A student might say, I'm stressed because of my grades. I'm failing two classes and my parents are going to take my phone away when I get my report card. What the student said can be paraphrased by saying, it sounds like you're concerned about your grades and the consequences at home. Is that correct? Ending a conversation should happen as smooth and natural as possible. However, sometimes it might be difficult, so here are some tips to help you. Try not to cut the person off mid-sentence. Instead, find a good stopping point. You can also use nonverbal communications, such as breaking eye contact, starting to pack up and clean up, etc. You can also say something along the lines of, I really enjoyed our conversation, or let's continue talking more about this when we meet for group next week. As adults, we want to create a relationship where our students will see us as trusted adults, but still show us respect and look up to us as their leader. Students will test on how much we will allow them to get away with. For example, they might try to text while we're talking or have a side conversation. And although we created a group agreement, it is up to us, the adults, to ensure that those rules are enforced. Therefore, we need to be assertive. If we are passive, the students will take advantage and walk all over us. If we are aggressive, the students will feel that we are mean and might not want to return to group. Being assertive means being firm but fair, talking to the students with respect but still keeping order in the group. Thank you for watching. I hope this video was helpful and you feel a little bit more comfortable in facilitating your groups. Communication skills take practice and the more we do it, the better we become at it. Like always, please do not hesitate to contact me if you have any questions. Bye!